Is it okay for a person to truly love both Star Trek and Star Wars? Star Trek Beyond, starring Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Carl Urban, Zoe Saldana, Simon Pegg, John Cho, Sophia Batella, Idris Elba, Anton Yelich, and directed by Justin Lin. When I say the movie stars all of those actors, it truly does. Each one of them shines in the film, and it is an ensemble effort. The movie starts with the crew of the Enterprise three years into its five-year mission. They have to dock with the space station for supplies, but must quickly depart again when an alien shows up asking for help rescuing her crew. The Enterprise is the only ship capable of making the rescue attempt, and the crew quickly swings into action. The best thing about Star Trek Beyond is its cast and the chemistry they all have with one another. They genuinely all look like they are having fun playing these roles and are comfortable in portraying these iconic characters. Pine, Quinto, and Urban have from the start of the new movies, but the rest of the crew have grown into their roles. It also makes sense for the characters they portray to be more comfortable with one another. They have been in deep space for three years, only relying on themselves. They know how to work as a team to accomplish a task and have absolute faith in one another. If there is one aspect of the story this film does beautifully, it is hammering this point home. Some might say it's too on the nose, but I enjoyed this aspect of the story immensely. All of the relationships in the story have meaning and seem genuine which comes from both the cast having fun with their roles and from the script Simon Pegg and Doug Wan wrote. You can see Simon Pegg's fingerprints all over the story. The dialogue is quick and witty and at times very funny. Carl Urban steals the show with his deadpan humor and had me laughing throughout the entire movie at just the right parts. There is one line in particular that had the entire theater rolling. Along with the banter, all of the dialogue between the characters seems natural. There is no part with the main cast that feels forced or untrue to the story being told. There is one scene in particular where most of the crew are working on a problem. They all each have an idea and contribute to solving the issue. I noticed this while watching the movie, but not because it wasn't well done, but due to how well the scene worked within the film. The great interactions between the characters were spaced evenly with insanely good action. I have never watched a Fast and Furious film. They have just never caught my interest. But I now know Justin Lin can direct action. There are five or six fantastic set pieces in Star Trek Beyond. They each deliver something different, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire runtime. Which is another plus of the movie. Along with the action, the pacing never slows down. The story is always on the move, with the right amount of time left for the story to develop before the next action set piece. There was only one time where I felt the action scene wasn't handled well. I got lost with what was happening on the screen because of the lighting and the surroundings of the shots. It wasn't horrible, but just wasn't as good as the other set pieces, which were all phenomenal. The only minor complaints I have with the film are its villain and the conveniences placed within the story. Idris Elba does a good job as the villain, and his is better than Eric Bana's Nero from the first movie. But I still felt his motivations were lacking. The story explains why he is fighting, but it just doesn't feel that natural or believable. It is the only part of the film that felt out of place. He is still menacing, and you want the crew to stop him. I just wanted a better reason as to why he was trying to destroy the Federation. I also found his story predictable, along with the way the rest of the crew make discoveries within the film. Some crew members just happen to run into certain areas and make big discoveries on a massive planet. However, these are minor nitpicks and really didn't bother me that much. It was just noticeable and stood out compared to how well the other parts of the story flowed. One element that did not feel out of place were the tributes paid to Leonard Nimoy and the character he made iconic. There were three times in the film where the movie played tribute to the man, each one touching and well done. I don't think Zachary Quinto was acting when he delivered some of his lines within the film. He wasn't talking about Spock, but Nimoy. I'm glad they took the time to play tribute to him within the movie. 
I have never been a big fan of the original series. It was before my time. I grew up watching the original crew's movies, along with the next generation. Spock and Nimoy were a huge part of each. Some of the best stories in the next generation had him in it. It was fantastic that he was part of the new movies and was the perfect actor and character to bridge the gap between the two universes. He is still missed. I would be remiss if I also didn't mention Anton Yelich, who again did a fantastic job as Chekhov. He was taken too soon, but shines bright again in this film. There is a nice small gesture at the end of this movie, and I'm sure others will be made in the next installments. The movie overall is fantastic. It is well worth seeing, and I plan on going back to see it again in theaters. For a summer with not many big blockbuster hits, Star Trek Beyond deserves its praise. I've enjoyed all of the films with the new crew. Yes, even Into Darkness. But this one is probably my favorite. I'll have to wait until repeat viewings, but I think this one is the most complete and well-made of the three. If you have seen Star Trek Beyond, comment and let me know what you thought. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? Go see it. Like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching.